Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. In this video, we're gonna go over uh, a bunch of principles that relate to how you can set up any Smith machine press for success. So this is not gonna be a video where we talk about how to bias the upper chest or the lower chest or the middle chest or the front delt or the triceps. We're gonna talk about more specifically uh, just principles of setup and execution on the Smith machine uh, and so that can transfer to anything that's inclined, anything that's decline, or anything that is somewhere in between. So without further ado, today I decided to record a video uh, to do this just of me doing an incline press. So this is roughly like a 45-ish degree press. And for those who are curious, this will be something that is most substantially biasing the upper regions of the chest more than anything else. And so I wanna talk you all through how you can sort of work through the principles here from scratch in order to set up and execute any kind of press, not just the kind of press that you're looking at here. So we're gonna look at a couple of different angles. Here's the, here's the first one. And I want you all to, first of all, you obviously have to choose your angle, right? Relative to your goal, which again, topic for another video. And then you're gonna to have to scoot the bench in, right? So when I say scoot the bench in, I mean actually put it into the rack, you know, in this direction. And many of you have who have tried to do this, perhaps unsuccessfully, know that the bench may be angled sort of slightly too far that way, slightly too far that way. Maybe it's over here where it shouldn't be. Maybe it's over here. Maybe it's too far forward. There's going to be a lot of adjustment that needs to sort of take into account all the things we're about to talk about. Okay, so just realize that you're probably in all likelihood not going to get it right on the first try. So don't try to get it right on the first try. Just assume that you're going to screw it up. And what you're going to screw it up based on is what we're going to talk about now. Okay. So here's what I like to do. The first thing you need to do is kind of, again, you take that guess as to where the bench might be. And then I'll show you here what I, what I do is I literally will go through the arm path that I know that I'm going to want to take. So I find my bottom position. I find where I'm going to put my arms. And then I basically just track upward from there. And so you want to end up in a position where the bench is set up such that you can basically mimic your arm path directly underneath of the bar. So from another angle here from the side, what you will notice is I'm basically making sure that at the bottom of the motion, my elbows are set up so that they are directly underneath of the bar. And this is kind of big picture principle number one, right? So here's the bar and here's the force direction of the bar. Right, it's slightly angled because you see, you all see how this um, uh, guide rod here is angled, right? So if this is the floor down here where this green is down here, you see how it, there's kind of this slight angle, right? So that's why the force direction coming from the bar is slightly this way. What you'll notice is that this force direction, if my elbow joint itself is like right here, is going directly through my elbow that way, okay? So principle number one is when you set up, you want to make sure that your elbow is at the bottom and stays throughout the rest of the range of motion underneath of the bar, okay? A lot of people, and I demonstrated this intentionally, I believe, to show you all what it should not look like, a lot of people are pressing at this angle, okay? Or end up pressing at this angle. So if I get my marker back here, okay? Look where the elbow is, look where that force direction is, right? So again, we would want to then move the elbow in this direction so that we could be underneath of the bar, pressing basically directly upward and backward through it. And the reason this is so important um, in simple terms is just because we want to minimize all of the potential fuckery that could occur when our elbow is not under the bar. In other words, we want to be able to load our shoulder in one direction without any kind of interference from other muscles and other potential connective tissues. Okay, so that's principle number one is align the elbow underneath of the path of the bar. And to do that, basically, you do the following, right? So set the bar down at the bottom when you kind of have a vague idea, again, go through that arm path first um, and then identify like, okay, are my elbows underneath of the bar and are they staying underneath the bar at least roughly throughout the range? And obviously notice that I'm doing this without any additional load. And also notice, just so that I don't forget to mention it, that I do have the safeties placed somewhere here. And uh, if we go back to the actual set that I showed you all first, Right, the safeties are very important because watch what happens at the end of the set. I can't push out of the bottom. And I actually, in this case, I just lock the uh, the rack that way, but it would also, I mean, you can pretty much see it here. It also hits the safeties uh, as I do that, okay? So safeties, elbows underneath of the bar, set your ideal arm path. Those are the things that need to occur all before you've even put load onto the bar, okay? Now, one more thing that is essential in being able to really isolate for any kind of portion of the chest here 
is this relationship not only of the elbow underneath of the bar, but of the forearm and the forearm's relationship to the bar. So watch, right? You notice the bar is here. Watch this relationship between the forearm and the bar and watch how it changes throughout the entire set. So I'll go to an actual set so you can see, right? That my forearm basically stays underneath, right? Boom, boom, this angle, 90 degrees underneath of the bar, but also roughly 90 degrees from the bar throughout the entire time, right? So I'll go back to the beginning of this set. If you notice that relationship, both in the top and in the bottom, I'm making sure that that 90-90 relationship stays the same. Number one, elbow underneath of the bar, which we saw from the other perspective. And then number two, this relationship here on either end, right? Where I have again, uh, in relation to the bar, a roughly a 90 degree angle in that form. And this is just yet again, another um, uh, feature of the setup that makes sure that we're loading our pecs and our shoulders most directly, as opposed to other things. Now, as I go through this actual set and you kind of watch me, right, notice that I'm not, and this is kind of the final point of the, of the setup here, that I'm not actually locking out. So if I go to the beginning of the set here, I'm not actually locking out my elbows, and that's for a very specific reason, which is that in this specific context, with this specific setup that I've described so far, locking and really that last kind of like 10 degrees of the range of motion is going to be something that is very, very triceps dominant. So if I go to the top and I uh, pull my handy dandy marker back out, here's kind of the elbow angle that is occurring. That wasn't really totally right because this bone is more like that and this bone is more like that, right? So I'm stopping just shy of full lockout so that uh, I can minimize the amount of elbow and or triceps uh, recruitment um, involved in this motion because my goals with this motion are specific to my chest. So if you're someone who wants to kind of combine a triceps pressing goal with a chest goal, then a lot of these features that we're describing here are gonna change, right? And they'll change again for the better if that is your goal and for the worse if that isn't your goal. And so notice, and this is kind of, uh, you know, repeating the same thing in other words, that this relationship never changes here, this 90-90 relationship, because I'm not locking. If I were to lock, well, this relationship would start to change or my elbow would kind of move in that direction. And so you can follow the 90-90 rule. You can also just say to yourself, hey, I'm just going to prevent myself from fully locking. All because, again, that end portion of the range is going to be 99% a triceps thing. They're very, very minimal involvement of the chest in that position. So kind of in order from start to finish here, right? You, you take a guess as to where the bench needs to be. You set your arm path and you analyze your arm path in relationship to the variables we discussed, elbow underneath of the bar and forearm roughly 90 degrees from the bar through the whole time. And then once you identify that you can actually keep your elbow underneath of the bar and that you can maintain that 90, 90 grip position, um, then you start to add load. And once you add load, by the way, some of these things might change. You might find like, oh, you know, this grip, it feels a little bit too narrow to me. Why don't I experiment around with maybe just gripping slightly wider? Or maybe you're not narrow enough and maybe you want to move your elbows in this direction so your forearms kind of need to move a little bit or your hands need to move a little bit further in, right? That is totally, totally fine. As I mentioned, not only are you going to take guesses in relation to where this bench is and how it moves, but you also might want to end up playing around with the angle. Maybe instead of here, you want it a little bit lower or even a little bit higher, right? No wrong answers, at least on the outset. You're basically just trying to find a comfortable window within which you can press and sustain the ability to press. And so this is kind of where I've ended up with a lot of experimentation over time and what feels comfortable for me when it comes to actually setting up and executing a Smith machine press for the goal of training my upper pecs. But again, you have that sort of guessing, that setting of the bench angle, you set your arm path without touching the bar, you make sure that your elbows and your forearms stay underneath of the bar throughout the entire time. And just to add a little bit of icing to the cake, don't worry about that lockout because that lockout is going to be something that again, as I mentioned, is largely just a triceps related thing. If you are interested in uh, doing this motion as a combined triceps chest thing, then it's perfectly fine. But if not, I highly recommend really just using the bottom 60-ish percent of the motion. This won't apply to all presses, but to many presses, um, especially those which have a fixed grip uh, as the Smith machine does. 
So if any of you have any questions about Smith Machine Pressing, please do let me know. And if you're interested in learning more about biomechanics, you're interested in sort of what underpins the logic of all the things that I'm going over, check the link in the description. Um, I have a, a beginner biomechanics course. It's a 30-day course, basically a, a fast pass, if you will, to learning biomechanics. So you need no experience at all in biomechanics. You don't even have to know a single term of jargon um, to start to start learning, right? Forget about all the textbooks. Forget about all the boring lectures you find on YouTube. Uh, this is basically just uh, one lesson a day for 30 days, which you could obviously do in less than 30 days to fast track your learning of biomechanics and how biomechanics relates to actual lifting application, all the stuff that we're talking about here. So again, I hope this, this uh, was helpful. And again, if any of you have any questions, please drop them in the comments below.